evolution, there's a problem. Because brains are very expensive things to have in your body, metabolically speaking. <coughs> they use a lot of energy. So we've seen that an adult brain is about 2% of our body weight. But actually it uses over half of our glucose when we're just under resting conditions, so if we're not jogging, running upstairs or something, if we're just sitting here in a lecture, paying attention, half of your metabolic effort is going into just keeping your brain ticking over. And in fact, in total, it's responsible for using one-fifth of your energy resources. So if you eat 2,000 calories a day, 400 calories of that is going into powering that massively oversized brain that you're carrying around on top of your neck. And it doesn't go up and down much. Even if you're not actively thinking hard and problem solving and worrying over something, you're using 75% of the maximum energy level that your brain uses. So, even when resting, it's burning energy. And I put a dim incandescent light bulb in that head because if we want to measure it in terms of electricity, a brain is using 15 watts, enough to make a dim, old-fashioned incandescent light bulb glow. In fact, if you had a nice, new, modern, energy-saving light bulb, 15 watts is enough to light a normal room. So if I, put energy, if I took your heads off and put energy saving light bulbs in, we could blind everybody in this lecture theatre with 300 lit up light bulbs. Now, in evolutionary terms, this is a bit silly. If we only need a brain one-tenth the size of the one we've got, and they're so expensive to run, we've got to eat more, we've got to go and catch more things, we've got to go and keep feeding this brain, even if we're not really using it. So there would be an evolutionary advantage, if we didn't really need the brain to be this big, to have a smaller brain. A homo less sapiens with a smaller brain, even one just half the size, could still has five too much times brain for its body weight, but would need to eat considerably less. So if there was pressure on diet and resources, it would have an evolutionary advantage over us. And it would beat us in the game of survival. So there must be some advantage, some reason why we have such a large brain. And of course the answer is, we're not just behaving at the level of other animals. We are forming much more complicated societies and groups. And we're using this brain all of the time to survive, both individually and as a species. So the reason why we've evolved this brain is that we are actually using it. All of it, not just that 10% that we need to be a basic animal. The other 90% is doing what it takes to be a human. And there are some other things. In fact, why haven't we got a brain that's even bigger? Why stop at 10 times as big? Why don't we become like one of those aliens on Star Trek with a huge, great head? Well, the reason is we're mammals and we have to be born. And one of the major constraints that's stopping us growing bigger brains is the fact that our heads have got to come out through a relatively small hole in the female pelvis. All of us have done this at one point, unless we were born by caesarean section. So, our brain size at birth is limited by the size of the female pelvis. Our infants' brains are just about as big as they can be. 
at birth. And we are born quite underdeveloped, neurally. Gazelles and deer stand up, wobble a bit, and then gallop off. Cats and dogs may be a little bit less independent at birth, but they're more independent than human children. Our brains continue to grow rapidly after birth. So we've been born prematurely. A one-year-old child has ten times the neural connections of a newborn baby. Their brains have continued to grow more neurons, more interconnections joining together, a richer mental life after just one year. So maybe we should actually be in the womb for one year and nine months, not just nine months. By the time we're three years old, our brains are three quarters the size of a fully grown adult. We're approaching that sort of plateau. But in fact, at that point, we have twice as many neural connections as an adult. And after this point, what starts to happen is that all those massively, rapidly growing connections start to die away if they're not being used. So our brains are making a fertile seedbed for our mental life. And that after this point, if you're not using a particular connection between two neurons, then it's reabsorbed and those resources are used somewhere else in the brain. And by the time we reach adulthood, we've got a perfectly synchronised brain, efficient, all the uh, wasted energy used taken out of it so we can do that survival <coughs> job and beat off all those hominids with smaller brains. But the fact is, we're trying to have a bigger brain. And we're born early so our brains can carry on growing. Maybe we could keep on growing our brains even longer. We've probably reached the optimum sort of size and energy trade-off in terms of the brain. 